So we're back with the latest instalment of our live matches and today you're joining me at Tolleton Ponds in North Yorkshire. Nice and close to home, five minutes from my front door, so really easy for me to get here and film a match today. And as you can see, even though it's five minutes away, I'm a bit later than everyone else, they're already setting up, no change there. So I'm going to go and get to my peg, which is peg eight on Coot, hopefully a good area by the sound of it, some fish to catch. So I'll join you on my box where I'll go through exactly what I'm going to do and I'll talk you through my match. Right, so, match has just started, and to be honest, I think it's going to be a really interesting day. These last sort of three to four weeks, venues all over the country have been absolutely brilliant. Been loads and loads of fish getting caught, big weights winning matches all over, records broken, and obviously we've had this really long, really hot summer and it's got the fish feeding everywhere. Water temperatures have been high, fish have been active. But obviously we're now getting to sort of the end of September and we're getting to the time of year when the weather does cool. Nights have definitely dropped cold. It's been down to three degrees here last night. As you can see now, it's lovely and sunny. It feels warm in the sun. When the wind blows, it's freezing. And I think we're definitely on the change now, just from probably Thursday, Friday, Saturday, there was big weights everywhere. And then I've just noticed, looking at results, these last sort of two days, weights have just suddenly took a nose dive. The methods that people are catching on have changed. You see on snake lakes, people catching on maggots down the middle, rather than sort of pellets or ground bait on the mud line. You can see people feeding big volumes of bait on these calf waters are starting to go now. And the fishing's definitely changed, and I feel like Oh, and I've got one, so that's a brilliant start. I feel like this is going to be the first match I've fished this year where things have actually changed. That could be foul luck, it's fighting a bit funny. But this could be my first match of the year where things have changed, the fish aren't feeding so aggressively. And I've decided to start off quite negative, but I'm already in the back of my mind thinking about maybe a slightly more negative approach. But to start with, I've started off six mil pellets, and I've just tapped in sort of four pellets, and that's took me, well, you've seen how long it's took me to get one, it's took no time. So that negative type approach has caught me a quick fish for definite. And I, like I said, I'm thinking that the fishing's probably gonna be harder than normal. So I'm actually glad to catch one really quick, but it can always just be a false storm. It's really worth starting off really negative in your peg and just tapping a few pellets in and sit and wait for a bite. Oh, and that's come off. I thought it didn't feel quite right. So I'm just going to do the same again though, I'm going to go in, 6 mil pellet on the hook and just feed, just feed 3 or 4 and like I was saying about venues changing now a couple of weeks ago I would have probably started off a little bit closer I might have just fished a top kit in one section, I might have fed more bait I just felt like with these conditions starting to change I'm just going to err on the side of caution to start with Start off just feeding them few pellets, put on my rigging, I'm going to be patient, see what I catch. Not only that, I'll see what everybody else catches as well. But the first thought in the back of my head now is, I'm planning on starting there reasonably close, maybe working my way out, and I feel like a bomb approach might be really good. I've got this aerator in front of me. I've got a lily bed slightly to my right, and also a spare peg to my right. So this middle bit of the lake is quite quiet. I feel like some carp might settle there. But it's already in the back of my mind. I've started on these six mils and I'm thinking if it's hard, it might be a case of feeding some four mil pellets instead of sixes. Not quite targeting such big fish. I might catch some F1s, might catch some skimmers, there's some barbel. Obviously I need to catch carp to win. But when the weights start dropping, especially in the early part of the match with the weather being cold overnight, it's all about putting something in your net. And something I always talk about, keeping yourself in with a chance, don't fall too far behind. So I'll start on this, see how it goes. Obviously if I catch a few carp on this, when I work my way out into the lake, 
I'll probably stick with six mil pellets. If this doesn't work so well, I don't catch as much as I'm hoping. See that first fish I caught was foul hooked. I'd like to think I will catch a few. If not, I might go straight onto four mils out there. Just try and draw some fish in my peg, catch anything I can, put some fish in my net and get myself off to a start. What you find at this time of year is even though the weight starts to go, the fishing starts to change, you still get these nice warm sunny days and by the time you get into maybe the last two hours of a match and the later stages of the match, the fish are still feeding and they're still feeding strong. So I could easily go from maybe feeding four mil pellets out on the long pole, trying to target anything I can, just aiming to get some bites, get some fish in my peg. It could come to the later stages and I might find the big pots out. I could be piling in maggots and micros and corn or whatever it may be. Because at that stage of the match, the fish have switched on and they're eating. The water temperatures are still high enough. They've got over that cold night and a little bit of shock. The sun's warming the water back up as the day goes on and the fish come on the feed. So just if you're not catching at the start, you can look to go for that bit more of a negative approach. Catch the fish while they're not really feeding and then later on become more aggressive, try and build your peg up for a really big finish. What's become noticeable, when I hooked that first fish, I hadn't seen a fish caught, and now, literally in the last 30 seconds, there's two people opposite me, both got one on now, someone, both, someone to my right's got one on, so it could be that the fish are gonna feed a little bit better than I thought, and then I might have to look at maybe feeding a little bit more bait, maybe feeding a bit more regularly, making some noise, drawing fish into my peg because the fish are eating better than I think. But at the minute, like I said, I'm just going to start off nice and gentle, just tap a few pellets in, I've set my trap and I'm waiting for a fish to come along and try and catch it. And I'll make all them decisions about changing my feed, becoming more positive, less positive, go down the negative approach, try and catch anything, fill it in in the edge late, all them things will come by what the peg's telling me through the match. So, I'm going to get on with some fishing, try and put a few in the net, and I'll come back to you in a little while, maybe sort of quarter of the way through the match, and let you know how it's gone, which one of them decisions I'm making, and how my peg's reacting to what I'm doing, and how I feel the match is going to progress as we go along. So for now, we're going to try and catch a few more, and I'll catch up with you soon. proven to be difficult um, it's not a lot being caught at all at the minute to be honest I think three carp is about best on the lake um, I foul up that one straight away on the short pole never had another bite went out on a long pole where I just tapped a few four mil pellets in foul up one first chuck again never had another bite and then I've changed to a bomb and I've caught two on that but at the minute it just seems like there's definitely fish around because you see an odd one dotted all over the place sort of from maybe this area down that way topping so you know there's a few about but you're getting no signs at all no liners i think i've had one liner on the bomb and two bites no signs on the pole and it just feels like it's a case of just waiting for them to start eating um, I've been loose feeding some four mil pellets on the pole with a catapult and I've had another couple of looks and I missed a bite and that's the only sign I've had. I was thinking about feeding some micros on that line just to try and draw something in, make something happen. I'm just a bit reluctant at the minute because I feel like the carp are in this area in the middle and I feel like if I go and feed my micros now and then the fish suddenly start feeding, I could be feeding the wrong bait. Um, so I'm trying to sort of hold off doing it, but it's getting to the point where I need to try and make something happen because I'm just not getting any bites. And as I say, there's one just top to my right here, sort of halfway to the next peg. It's definitely round here, and I'm confident that 
second half of the match they'll feed late on I'm sure I'll catch some in this edge to my right where I've got my spare peg and so the spare peg's pointing back into the middle of the lake where I feel like the bulk of the fish probably are so I'm confident I can catch late on there and when they come in they can be really easy to catch you could come back from sort of nowhere to to winning so I'm reluctant to struggling to get my pellets out with the wind as well which is a problem but I'm reluctant to do anything too drastic too soon while nobody's catching because like I said three carp I think is best on the lake I've got two I could catch two in my next two casts and all of a sudden you're winning the lake so there's no need to rush anything and this is one thing that you always need to remember when you're on these carp type venues proper carp I'll just fire some pellets in while the wind drops and I've got a chance Yeah, the thing with big carp or proper carp fishing is they will feed when they want to feed. And they can be really, really moody. You can have them in your peg and not catch anything. And then all of a sudden, a minute later, it's like every carp in the lake wants to eat and you get a bite every put in for the rest of the match. And catch 100 pound, 150 pound. So the biggest things for me with fishing for proper carp are making the right decisions at the right time, feeding the right areas of your peg at the right time and most of all being patient you don't need to be catching all the time and to be honest these aren't particularly big fish they're sort of four pound a couple i've had um but carp of any size are, are naturally moody they act the same and i'm sure i'll feed down this edge later on and they'll come in because i'll be hopefully feeding it at the right time of the day to catch them It'll be really easy now to start throwing loads of bait about my peg firing bait everywhere dumping bait in the edge i need to catch early but when they want to feed and you can catch one a chuck it's surprising how quickly you can build a weight up so at the minute i think patience is key after this cast i'll probably have another look on my long pole line where i'm still loose feeding some four mil pellets if i don't get a bite on that i might look at feeding some micros on it just to try and draw some fish in and see what i can catch it's almost at the point where i wish i'd have had some maggots to maybe throw in somewhere just to just to catch something until that golden feed and spell that we'll hopefully get later on but i'm sure i'm in the right area to just keep fishing for a carp and i'll nick an odd one or two if with two hours to go you can have maybe eight that will probably be okay because you might catch another 15 in the last couple of hours that's just the nature of this type of fishing and as you look around the lake there's just nothing really happening now the only fish i've really seen caught have been on a rod mostly chucking to these lily beds you can see I actually started off casting to the area to my left and i've changed now i'm casting a bit further to my right to this lily bed and just loose feeding a few pellets now, the problem is this wind's a pain i maybe should have fished a feeder so i can get my nice pile of bait there and just get some pellets in when i can i'm struggling to loose feed as accurate as what I would like to but I'm sure if I just keep a few pellets plopping in I'll grab an odd fish's attention but it's just strange that the lack of line bites the lack of indications considering I have seen a few fish top so it just makes you think they're sort of milling about not too interested in eating at the minute but like I said that's carp fishing and they will feed when they want to feed and when they want to feed it's then a case of making the most of it fishing in the right place and doing all the right things to increase the amount of fish you catch over what everyone else does i'm not quite sure all the other lakes fishing but that doesn't seem to be too good either so obviously this cold night last night's probably knocked it a little bit the match today is actually they don't pay the overall winner they pay the winners on each lake so it's not too much of a concern what's happening on that other lake but it's just interesting to see that there's not a lot being caught on there either and these both of these lakes are full of fish been fishing really really well all summer so obviously these first few cold nights have definitely just give it a little knock and slowed it down but the sun's shining try, oh, try and get a little bit of bait out there again the sun's shining and that's obviously warming the water up all the time and hopefully the fishing will improve as the day goes on we'll start getting a few more bites and like i said just try and make the most of it once them fish are having a bit of a feed later on so for now i'm going to just sit on this a bit longer and then hopefully have another look on the pole with a bit of luck out
I will get a bite, but if I don't, I'm going to definitely start thinking about maybe just potting a little ball of micros on that line, just seeing if it makes something happen. Drawing fish in your peg. You either need to make some noise and have some bait coming through the water, which is what I'm trying to do with them four mil pellets, rattle them on the surface, have a few falling through the water, feed reasonably regularly without overdoing it too much and hoping to draw fish in like that. But if not, the smaller the particles you can feed, definitely the more fish you draw in. So things like, that's why things like micro pellets and ground bait, so successful for drawing fish into your peg. And if I don't get a bite next time I go on the pole, I'll try putting them micros in, maybe even a little bit of corn, the type of baits that'll catch anything. I might catch an odd F1, a skimmer, a barbel, whatever it might be. Just create a little bit of activity in my peg, a bit of attraction, and see if that helps. If that doesn't work, then obviously it's going to be a case of wait till sort of carp o'clock when the fish decide to start feeding. We're actually fishing quarter to 12 today until quarter to six. So we're going well into that time of day when the carp feed, which is why I'm not too worried about not catching now, especially with no one else catching. Because I do feel like I'm in the right area of the lake. I feel like this little bit to my right is where a lot of the fish are because I've seen an odd one, not particularly crash out, but a boil or a swirl or a sign that there's a fish there. And obviously that's the side of me, that edge line I'm going to fish is. Oh, I think we've got one, look. Keep hold, don't let him in that lily bed. And like I said, the fish seem to be to my right, so I'm hoping that that edge will come really good later on. It's not a big fish, but very welcome with how hard the foot. They're certainly pulling hard though. Don't want to let them pull too hard because obviously we've got that area that can snag me on. I've got that lily bed that can snag me on. And important to fish proper gear with this type of fishing. When you're fishing towards features, you want to be able to hold on to them if you need to. So I've gone with all 21 FXT rig line as my hook length. And that is to a size 12, 303 hook. So nice strong gear, I know I can hold on, I know I can pull hard without risking my hook length breaking, my hook straightening out or anything like that. Oh, it's a, oh I thought... Never interesting thing, Every, all three of my fish up to now have been commons. <laughs> Maybe the mirrors don't want to feed yet, you actually do find that fairly regularly, that one type of fish will feed and the other doesn't, but... So that's three carp now. If three or four is best on the lake, keep myself up there. I mean, it's just going to be a case of <laughs> ticking along and waiting until the bulk of them fish start feeding. But like I was saying about that spare peg is definitely the side of me where I feel most of the fish are. It's quite deep down there. And when I've been on this lake previously, although well, I haven't been on here for a long time, it was always really good for in the edge and they absolutely, they absolutely loved maggots. So that's definitely going to be my approach down there. Feed some maggots and hopefully catch a load later on. Relying on the fact that that's the side where the fish are really going to want to be as well. And hopefully I can just tick a long, nick an odd one on this, nick an odd one on my long pole line. And then when it's feeding time later on, hopefully catch a few in that edge. So, go and get back to what I'm doing. And hopefully next update, we've got a few more fish, things are starting to happen and the lake's starting to wake up. So, we're, uh, we're sort of halfway through the match now. And it's been really, really difficult. There's not a lot at all being caught. I would say seven or eight fish is probably best on this lake. It's been a real struggle for me since, since the last update. I've had one carp on the long pole, not long after the update, and then a really, really long spell with no bites and I decided 
to start feeding a bit more aggressively on that long pole with my four mil pellets. It's getting at the time of day and the fish want to start having a feed. There's an odd fish more being caught. And I actually went in and I got a couple of liners and I even seen one move in amongst my feed. And I've just picked a shallow rig up and gone in and caught one. So, hopefully, it's the start of some fish having a little feed. And if I can maybe catch two or three more doing this, before I get to the time of the day when they want to be in the edges and then I could get a good finish that was a decent fish as well so I've got five carp now like I said seven or eight fish will be as much as anybody's got on here and I've actually seen a couple of fish swirl as I've slapped my rig in since I've started doing this so it makes me think that one's possibly not just a loner there's definitely a chance of another one or two. Hopefully, it'll come fairly quickly. I could do with this wind, just every now and again it dies off a bit, and I could do with it dying off a little bit more, so I can feed a little bit nicer, fish a little bit nicer. But, but you've got fish in whatever conditions you face with, not a lot you can do about it. It's so best off trying to not let it bother you. And just getting on with it and I think I'm just gonna have to come back and, and change my shot a little bit there take a number 10 off swap it for an 11 I just want to be able to see my bristle a bit better at the minute it's a bit of a struggle in that ripple and a bit of a funny coloured water so I'll just nip that off but st I'm still yet to feed any bait down the edge and I've seen a couple of fish caught down the edge but I still just feel it's a bit early I just want to leave it as long as I can. And I'm a really big fan of feeding the edge as late as I possibly can, especially when the fishing is difficult, which is when you would think it's the time to feed it early because it's sort of get out of jail. But all that ha tends to happen is you feed it early and it's just ne never as good as if you feed it later and you can end up fishing it the rest of the day to catch as many as you would have caught in the last hour, last two hours when you feed it late. I'm not going to leave it too much longer because I've seen a couple caught, but I do just still feel it's a little bit early. Fish are reluctant to feed. And you're always best trying to feed it at the time of the day when the fish actually want to eat. So you're putting some bait in, make a little bit of commotion with it, but do it at that time when the fish are naturally wanting to come in anyway. So I'm going to just stick with what I'm doing. I'll, I'll have another look on the bottom, but for the next little period of the match, I'm definitely just going to try and concentrate on this line because since I've upped my feed, obviously combined with maybe a few more fish moving about and maybe an odd one more willing to eat, there definitely seems to be the odd sign of fish on this line, whether it's a fish that moves, a couple of liners I've had fishing on the bottom, and obviously I've just caught one two, three, four minutes ago, just as I was starting this update. So, confident this is where I'm gonna get a few bites in this next little spell. I've just noticed someone else catch one down the edge, so I definitely need to start thinking about putting some bait there. Ideally, I wanna feed it up so that I can, I can fish it in the last two hours. Keep throwing a few pellets short now and again as well. I was really hoping I might go out and get another one on this fairly quickly just to be able to get myself settled in on something because nothing has been particularly good I've had one on the bottom on this line but that one's shallow and I've had three on a bomb to be honest that bomb's been really surprising because there's a few fish moving out about out there I just can't catch one and Maybe it's just to do with they're out there for the safety, they've got a bit of cover as far from the anglers as they can get, they're not interested in feeding out there. At least the fish that you feel like are going to come close, come in the edge, maybe come shallow where I'm fishing now, they're fish that want to eat, they're coming there for the food, where I could be chucking out to them reeds, lily pads, sorry, and, and the fish possibly are just there for safety, they don't really want to feed definitely now in this last sort of 10-15 minutes I've seen a few more fish caught 
I can actually see two people on the far bank with one on. Someone's just landed one on my bank. It's definitely starting to get to that time when the fish are going to feed. And now's the time to start sort of trying to make your move and plan what you're going to do next and what you think's going to come good. I'm actually, next time I ship back, I'm going to go and put some bait in that edge because it's definitely starting to feel like the time of the day when there's a chance of coming in. Someone else has just hooked a fish on the other bank again. So that's three out of four people over there now all playing one. Bearing in mind there's been very few fish caught in the last few hours, that's definitely a sign that the fish are waking up and I think it's always really important to try and keep your eye on everything that's going on the lake to help you make informed decisions rather than just doing anything a bit rash and for no particular reason. And the fact that... Oh, and there we go, I've got lots of chub. I just thought I'd got another one then. But obviously they all count at the minute and that now just gives me the perfect chance to just feed that edge line while my rig's out of the water. Let's put that down. And I'm going to feed mostly maggots. So a good handful of maggots I'm going to feed down there. I'm just going to top my pot off with some micros and put that in from a bit of a height, make some noise let the fish know that it's there. Plenty of noise, just like I've chucked all my bait in at the end of a session. Hopefully the carp come to that. Have another little look shallow. Just a little bit disappointing then when I hooked that chub because I thought, oh, just for a second, I'd got another carp. throw a few more pellets in short so I can have a look there as well but we're definitely getting that time of day and the fish are going to start coming in to eat so it's not going to be long now until I look in that edge look on my short fall line and hopefully we can get a good finish because to be honest we're going to need it so I'll keep on with this shallow line maybe have another look on the bottom now we're not far off the time of the day when we're hoping the carp are going to feed and hopefully we can get a good finish to the match so I'm going to try and get a few more caught and I'll catch up with you again probably in another hour hour and a bit and by that point we're definitely at the time of day when the fish will be feeding and hopefully things will be going a lot better and we're getting towards the type of weight we need to catch
like I've been saying all day, typical car, struggle for bites all match. Next thing, they decide to open the mouths and we've got about two hours left. This actually might not be a carp, this could be a barbel. But about two hours left, caught that one shallow earlier, managed to catch another one. I had a little look on the bottom and I got a couple of liners but felt like I was just wasting my time. Fed the edge again, it is a little barbel. But fed the edge again, I dropped in, it went straight under with a car. That time I went in, had a couple of liners, seen a boil next to my float and it's gone under. Unfortunately, it's a little barbel, but it's definitely all changed now. The fish are starting to feed, starting to come into the edge. And hopefully I can get a good finish now because there is a boat. Let me just check. Yeah, basically two hours of the match left, so loads and loads of time. Hopefully it'll come in down this edge and stay, but it's absolutely amazing how there can be nothing to catch all day. Really struggling for bites, yet when they want to eat, they'll eat. And obviously the days people catch really big weight, they catch them for a lot longer, catch them a lot quicker when they do turn up. And on days like today when it's hard, it's a case of being patient, catching what you can. With a little bit of hindsight, obviously I've caught them two fish shallow. I wish I'd maybe had a little go at that earlier because I might have nicked another one or two. I did miss a bite earlier and seen one ball wave off. Never had many signs out there, but with the odd fish that's been moving about, I think maybe you could have just slapped a rig about, maybe had an odd one over your feed, and I might have just caught one or two. But hopefully I can get a good finish now, like I say. Now it's all about making the most of the feeding window. The rest of your match is about making the most of catching anything you can while you're waiting for that spell where the fish turn up and they're willing to feed. And now we've got to that spell. It's about making the most of it. Feed your peg right, don't miss bites, don't foul up them, and just try and maximise. Oh, there we go, straight away. Try and maximise this catching spell, because now I might only catch five or six, but there's nothing to say you can't catch 100 pounds in the last two hours. So don't rush anything, take your time, make sure you hit the bites, make sure you land the fish and maximise every little bit of that time when the fish are feeding that you can and really make the most of it. Don't come away thinking I should have done this, I should have done that. That looks like a good fish. So now I haven't caught two or three quickly. I definitely feel like a good finish is on the cards. Feeding maggots down there, dead red maggots. Quite a lot, I'm feeding sort of half a big pot after each fish now. Topping it up with just, you can see there, they're a good stamp fish. You can see we catch a big weight of them. I'm just topping them maggots up with just a few micros. And for me, the micros are key, they're what draw the fish in. They, eat, they want to eat the maggots. The micros definitely pull them into the peg, but figuring out the amount to feed is really important. So what I like to do, is feed a decent amount when I'm first feeding it to draw them in. You can see how many maggots I'm feeding, real good handful, probably nearly half my pot. And then micros, when I'm first feeding it, I'm probably looking at feeding again a good handful when I'm trying to draw them in. But now that they're there, just a pinch, just enough for a little bit of attraction to pull the fish back in. But lots more maggots, which are obviously what the fish, or what I'm wanting the fish to eat. And then, just make sure I pot it in just in the right spot. Which today is really easy because I've got a camera in the edge to line up with, which works really well. But after that, I'm then fishing two worms on the hook. Now, obviously you've seen how many maggots I'm feeding and it'll take an eternity for a carp to pick out the maggots on my hook over that lot. Two nice big worms. Picked out really, really easy. 
give them a little stretch with my finger, stop them wriggling about too much, and straight back in on that pile of bait, and hopefully it goes straight under. Like I said earlier, the most important things in carp fishing are doing the right thing at the right time, feeding the right areas at the right times of the day, and then being patient. And patience has been the key today. I've been confident all day that I'll catch some fish in this edge, and it's about catching whatever else you could, taking your time, don't rush to get in the edge, and hopefully now I can have a really good spell at the end. And that patience and waiting and holding off feeding that edge will, will pay off for me. There's nothing to say it will, they could stop coming in, but generally if you do it at the right time, the fish will come in and stay. And I feel confident now that the fish will stay in the edge. And most of the rest of my match, or hopefully all of the rest of my match, it's going to be spent fishing in this edge. I've obviously got the option if I need to, and something I often do really late in the match. If this goes funny or I stop catching, it's always the option to open up another edge to my left. Obviously, I've got an angler on the peg to my left, but the later you feed it, the closer you tend, tend to be able to get them to come, so there's nothing to stop me feeding that line on a top kit or a top kit in one if I feel the need to open another edge line up, but ideally, I'd like to just sit and fish this line and that'll be me for the rest of the match. But like I said, just be wary if it does stop. You could need somewhere else to go. I'll keep throwing a few pellets short. That'll be sort of my backup line. And if I need to, coming towards the last hour or in the last hour, I might possibly open up another edge line to my left. Like I said, just on a top kit. Top kit in one and feed that lay and almost mimic someone packing up and throwing the bait away. Which is kind of what I tried to do down this edge when I put that bait in from a height, made some noise. But you'd be doing it even closer to the end of the match. And even further into the time of the day when the carp want to feed. So now I've put my bait in. I've got my pile of maggots and then few micros there. I've got my worms right on top of them case of being patient. I think I just had a little line of there, it looked like a little indication. But when it's as deep as it is today, and it's probably three foot where I'm fishing, it's nice when you don't get too many signs, because if you get a lot of signs in that depth, oh, I just missed a bite, just as I said that. But you don't want to get too many signs because they can be really hard to catch. Ideally, you just want the float shooting under with no signs at all. So I'll just drop back in. I'm not going to refeed straight away. I'll give that a couple of minutes. If I haven't caught one, I feel like I've spooked the fish out. I need to refeed to draw one back in. Then I'll just come back, fill my pot again, and pot some in. There's definitely more fish being caught now all over the lake. I think I'm probably two or three fish behind the people who are doing best. So a little bit of catching up to do, but not too much. And there we go. Good decision not to refeed too soon. <laughs> And the way they're turning up now, it gives me a great opportunity to catch up with the people who are ahead of me. And like I said, now it's all about making the most of the golden spell. Whether you're going to catch £50 or you're going to catch £100 in this time, make sure you catch as much as you possibly can. And again, you can see, no rushing, just take my time, good fish again. Real weight building fish. Keep the top kit nice and low. Let the elastic do its job and make sure you get them in. It's took long enough for them to turn up. Obviously, you don't want to be playing them forever, but it's took long enough for them to turn up. You don't want them now coming off at the net or pulling too hard, breaking your rig or anything like that. I've got proper gear on it. Again, I've got that O21 FXT rig line. Well, that's a good fish. 21 FXT rig line which I know is not going to let me down and a size 12 4 or 4 hook to mount them two worms on nice and big nice and sharp and again strong enough so I've probably missed my chance with that one to get it in nice and easy so it's going to always take a little bit longer but here we go up he pops I wasn't quite ready for him
And there we go. Like I said, no real rush. I've not really pulled its head off. Yes, you could probably get it in a little bit quicker than that. But at the minute, I'm wanting to make sure I get them all in the net. Don't want to be losing any. And again, that's another good fish, six or seven pound. And all of a sudden, I've just caught 20 pound in probably 15 to 20 minutes. And it puts you right back where you need to be. So, I'm going to go and concentrate for a little while now. Catch as many as I can. I'll come back to you before the end and hopefully the fish haven't gone anywhere and things are going really well. As I predicted, the edge came really, really good. And I've caught probably eight or 10 down there. But it has just slowed down a little bit now. And just had a really small carp, about a pound. Uh, I've had a chub. But I've just rested it, gone down the side to my left. And I'm hoping, now I've just refed again hoping they'll have settled down a bit again and I can get another run of fish but it's been really really good I've caught I've gone from having sort of 30 pound to having 90 pound in no time really and just as I was starting to think it was going to stay really good though I was getting no liners no indications it'd literally just sat, sit there and whether it sat there for 30 seconds or three or four minutes it just goes straight under and there'd be a carp on and I was getting no liners no signs then all of a sudden, an odd fish started sort of boiling about and a bit of movement, getting a few liners, foul hooked one. Um, and then they just sort of seemed to drift off and I caught that little carp and a chub and uh, it just didn't seem quite right. Fed down to my left, I've had a little go there, never got a bite. I did see a carp move though, as if it was on its way in, but never, oh, I've just had a liner there. That looks like it's a small fish, but it's spooked, spooked a carp. So they're definitely still about. Uh, but yeah, it's just kind of a little bit frustrating at the minute because I know there's still fish there, but I'm not catching them. They're not, they were very easy to catch for a spell and then they just got a little bit spooky. But loads and loads of the match left. We've still got, just have a quick look. It was probably 50 minutes of the match left. So plenty of time to catch a few more. Just a shame it died how it did because it was really, really good. Um, a lot more fish being caught now than what were being caught earlier, that's for certain. But, yeah, that was annoying because I hooked that one. And there was definitely calf there. You could see them spook as I hooked it. So I'll refeed again. And back in there. Hopefully they just come in and settle back down because when they were there it was brilliant. They were real nice stamped fish, they were sort of six to eight pound. Let's try and find a worm to put on the hook. It's a little bit frustrating how they've how they've gone out of what did because it looked like it was gonna stay like that all match. But just shows when they wanna come in and eat, and I've actually just seen one boil right on top of where I've just fed. Hopefully I'll catch him this time. But yeah, they won't feed until they want to feed. And once they come in and decide to eat, it's like a different story and, and it's always a case of just waiting. Some days you're lucky and they'll feed at the start. Others, it takes a little bit longer like today. It just goes to show, don't push your peg too early because you can certainly come back, and especially a day like today when it's fishing hard, there wasn't that much being caught anyway. Hopefully, oh, there we go. Hopefully, just in this last 50 minutes, it'd be nice to catch maybe another 
seven or eight, get another really good run. But I could see that after I fed, even though it's three foot deep, after I fed I was just shipping out and I seen a boil just a little bit further along the bank and that's obviously the fish coming in from wherever they sat feeling safe. Much smaller fish than what I was catching earlier that. But they're all welcome. And hopefully, like I say, hopefully we'll, we'll get another, another good run and finish the match off nicely. I think that one probably that puts my second net up to around 50 pounds so another fish or two in that move on to the third one and hopefully I can get a few in that as well that would be ideal but definitely changing the stamp of fish from when I first went down there last two or three have not been very big in comparison just need to get some more maggots out use them all been saving them leftovers for weeks ready for a nice edge day so just keep bagging them up putting them in the fridge at home and leaving them in there lemons are uh, you can lemons smell a little bit old to be honest just give them a quick wash but it seems this time of year when the fish want to come in the edges there's nothing better than natural baits sort of full of protein and that type of thing that fish really want building up to winter so again same as before a nice handful a few micros one thing you might notice the maggots I was feeding earlier were red these ones are white what what I would say a lot of people seem obsessed with dead red maggots it's all you ever hear dead red I'm not sure with a carp are fussy and I'm definitely not. So that's one thing. If people are talking about dead maggots, don't assume they have to be red. Keep hold of anything you've got because once they come in and they're hungry, you can feed pretty much any colour you want. And I'm not sure it makes any difference. I've used reds, I've used whites, I've used bronze maggots before. And I've never found any of them any better than any other. So a nice easy way to make it a bit cheaper when you need a large amount of them. Save whatever you've got, bag them up and just stick them straight in the freezer. It's definitely been really important once they've turned up to feed, that full, sort of not quite full, but maybe two thirds of my big pot full, nice volume of bait, draw them straight in. And when it's been good, they've been so easy to catch. Considering how deep it is, I've had so few liners. I'm sure we'll see on the videos, on the, on the bite camera, it sort of just sits there, barely moves and shoots under. Really lovely catching them when they're like that. And you're not pulling your hair out with fish you can see because the water's shallow. But now, this is pretty much me. I'm gonna, if I keep potting a little bit of baiting down that left hand side, probably will have another look unless this comes really, really good again. But now just at the minute it's just sort of sitting nicely again no liners no indications and hopefully same as that last chuck we'll catch one in a minute but it's just worth pointing out again it's sort of oh, oh, a liner then i shouldn't really have struck at that reiterating what we were speaking about earlier this big carp fishing is all about patience and all about waiting until the right time of the day when the fish want to feed some days you'll force them into feeding, but most of the time you won't. It's just sort of the one thing I can't get across enough. Is don't try and make the fish want to feed when they don't want to feed. And that's why in the warmer weather, things like mugging or just slapping without feeding anything works so well because you can catch them fish that don't want to feed without forcing anything, without ruining your peg. And just sort of set your peg up for later in the match when the fish are ready to feed. So it'd be just nice if we could get another one before we go off camera. Did just have that little liner and when it comes to feed, and that's been noticeable today as well, obviously I feed my big pot and I can go in and sit there and wait for a bite. Most of the time I haven't had any signs that's gone under and I've got one. What's been noticeable, if I do get a sign or two and then I don't catch one, I need to feed again. I can't wait until I catch one. Whether they've come in and ate it all or 
they've come in spooked off and I need to pull them back in with another pot of bait. I'm not quite sure, but once I get a couple of signs and then sit a while like I am now without any signs, I generally don't catch one. Even when it was really good earlier and I was catching them quite quickly, I'd catch one straight away or I'd go in and wait and wait and wait. And then if I got a couple of signs, I could go in, feed again and get one straight away again. So I definitely need to pull them back in. Like I say, I'm not sure if they've ate it all or they just need something to draw them back. But that was definitely noticeable. And, and I had that liner and I've not had another sign. So if I don't get one in the next sort of, maybe the next minute, I'll just come back, pot some more bait in. And looking at how long they're taking to come in now, I might just up the amount of micros I'm feeding again. Like I said, then micros are giving you all of your attraction, drawing the fish in for you. And if they're taking a while to come in, I can up them numbers of micros again, hopefully draw the fish back in a little bit quicker. And when I come back to feed, I'm going to feed this, but I'm also just going to pop some bait in down to my left. Just keep some bait there. Because I definitely feel like I'll be having another, another look on that line as well. So, I think I've waited long enough now. Not a sign, there's been one in. He hasn't come back, I've not caught him. So, feed some more bait. Similar amount of maggots to what I have been, maybe just a few less. A bit of a bigger amount of micros. See if that just gets one to come in for me. And then I'm just going to pop the other side as well. <laughs> bit of noise this time, see if I can make them come back. And then same again the other side. A bit more this side because I'm not fishing it, I'll give them a full pot. And plenty of noise again. So, hopefully, I'm going to get a bite this time. Keep that line out there fed. So, obviously, if I don't go in and get a bite on this now, I might have to think about just trying something else. It's the last thing I want now after I've had that poor first part of the match and I've had a really good run is to let that good run down by sitting and just catching nothing for the rest of the match again so if we're going to stop coming in here I can have a quick look to the left if it's no good I might feed another pot maybe another two really go for it and just have a look on that short pole line and see if I can get a bite on that at the minute I'm hoping they just come back in this edge. Because it was so good earlier, I'm really surprised that they've gone and not come back in. It was so good, it just looked like it was going to last the rest of the match. No signs of anything coming in. Not seen any boils or anything since that last fish. Obviously, I just had that line a last show. Amazing. Normally, once they come in as strong as that, don't go anywhere. I was really surprised when I went into my left and never caught one. I really thought, because they'd come in so strong this side and I fed that side so late, I thought I'd just nick a quick couple while I left this side alone. But it never moved, so hopefully if I don't get one here I can drop in the other side and they might have turned up there. I'm just looking about, to be honest. I'm not really looking at the other bank, but along my bank everyone seems to have slowed down a little bit. So whether the carp have just had a little bit of a feed and frenzy and then they've, they've eased back off again, I'm not sure. But I'm going to go and get back to it. Hopefully get a good finish. Could really do with another little run. And I'll catch up with you just before the end of the match and let you know how it's going.
just coming in now to the last five minutes of the match and they've never really come back to be honest I think I've had another four or five down the edge but much smaller than what I was catching earlier probably put me up to 100 to 110 pound I would think uh, just not really come back in any numbers which is annoying most people seem to have slowed a little bit but there's odd fish still being caught it's almost like because we're finishing so late the temperature's dropped and it's sort of knocked the fishing back again a little bit and it almost makes me think could he have just come down the edge maybe half an hour earlier and had a longer spell of catching them before it sort of started cooling down again I mean it's absolutely freezing now even my feet are starting to get cold definitely now you can feel we're sort of getting to that time of the year where the nights are going to get colder and colder frosts are on the way and fishing's definitely going to start slowing down now over the next sort of three four five weeks but they've still been willing to feed today obviously in a spell it was really good there's still an odd fish coming in now getting a few liners now to be honest not loads but more than what I was earlier considering I'm catching less which is it's a bit strange and I'm just thinking we've got it's about four minutes left so I'm going to give this another minute well, there's one there now I'll just add a sign it's hard to decide because I'm thinking I'll give it another minute and maybe just drop in down my left hand edge I've not caught anything there but I've just refed it again and I'm sort of in two minds whether to drop in see if I can catch one there to finish my match off or just sit patient here because I've just had another line of them there's definitely one coming in I'm just not catching it let's lift my rig out and reset it again but yeah I mean at the minute this last bit I could get one I might not I'm sort of not not feeling confident that I'm definitely going to get one but there's an odd one coming in so it's hard to decide whether I just sit wait be patient if I sit and wait and it flies under and I get one I'll be thinking brilliant made the right decision if I don't get one I'm going to be sat thinking well would I have got one in the other edge but bearing in mind I haven't actually had one down that side it's it sort of makes my decision to stay this side a bit easier and there's another sign that's one just spooked out swam through my rig and swam back out away from the bank they're still coming in but they're just not settled down like they were earlier um, and yeah they're proving difficult to catch to be honest my rig's caught up on something as well yeah a bit of a disappointing last hour to be honest um, I've just spooked another one out again trying to put my rig in so there's definitely a few there now it's almost like I could almost like I could do with coming back and feeding again now but it's so late in the match I'm like a little bit reluctant to do that uh, I mean earlier on there was a very good chance I'd feed and I would get one instantly as soon as I went in but I just don't feel like that's going to happen now I don't feel like they're coming in confident enough and in big enough numbers now it's almost like they're just swimming in having a look not really feeding brush against my line swim off again where before as soon as there was one there you just caught it another little line of there I've had more indications in this last 10 minutes than I've probably had down there the whole of the time I've been fishing it two minutes to go and I think I'm just going to make my decision there's obviously some coming in I'm just going to sit and wait and hope I get one but at the minute it's just proving a little bit frustrating I've tried going down there and kinder potting some baiting and waiting and nothing at all happens got to feed a big pot to get anything to come in which was great when I was catching but now I just seem to be coming in and I don't catch one and the only other thing I maybe should have done and it's just a bit too late now I should have done it 15 minutes ago just put another section on I've gone a little bit closer to the next platform 
maybe seeing if I could have just caught one or two more fishing a bit past my feed. But oh, turns out it was the right decision. I managed to get one. Well, that there was fish there for a long time before I hooked that. I could just tell it was never quite right. It took a bit longer than what I'd have really hoped to catch one, considering they were there. I really don't know what's caused it. The only thing I can put it down to is the weather cut getting a bit cooler, and that's them just short of time. Always a nice time to have a fish on just as we finish. So we'll get this one landed, hopefully, and get weighed in and have a little chat through rigs and what else I think that I could have done. But, yeah, it's good that that edge came came to life and obviously I had very little before then so really did need it to just disappointing after having such a good spell on it oh it's just slowed off they haven't come in as strong and when they have come in they've been a little bit harder to catch it feels like a nice fish to finish on though yeah lovely fish another one probably seven or eight pound and I would say That'll take me, assuming I land it, somewhere between 110 and 120 pounds. So, I mean, considering where I was at with a couple of hours to go, it's been a good end to the day. Slip this one in the net, I'll get my gear packed away, get weighed in, and we'll have a little run through exactly what rigs I've used and let you know how I've done. a lovely day caught plenty of fish and we're just waiting for the scales now so perfect time to run through rigs and bait and the other little things that we've missed out during the day so first up obviously i've had my bomb rod i've caught two or three on that and that's been dead simple i spoke about that earlier just a little inline bomb o21 fxt rig line hook length to a size 12 303 and i've just banded either two six mil pellets or an eight mil pellet on that loose fed a few and that's caught me, I think, two or three fish early on. Rock hard, but obviously they're all worth catching. Moving on to the long pole. Again, long pole, not very good, but it's just something I set up to try and catch a couple of fish. Thought it'd be a bit better than it was, to be honest. I was expecting I'd maybe catch five or six in that early spell. Think I've had two on it. But again, two fish that the, you're putting something in your net in that early spell. So rig wise, starting up with my elastic, I've got the 14 to 16 FXT hybrid. Nice and soft on the strike, powers up nicely. If I hook a big fish, I'm gonna land it. Smaller carp, again, it's perfect. Main line, nice and durable, 019 FXT rig line. And then I've got my two back shots just above my float there. They just help me control that rig in what's actually been quite a nasty wind at times. Now moving down, these are just prototype floats, but the basic principle of them, the basic makeup is a nice thin body, a carbon stem, and a two mil plastic bristle, hollow plastic bristle. I can dot that down, see it nicely in the wind, in the conditions, but it shows me what's a liner and what's a bite, nice and thick, nice and buoyant. Carbon stem allows me to spread my shot out if I want, just watch that float settling and watching all them shot register, but also, it's there for strength. It's not going to bend like wire might, meaning that I'm not going to ruin rigs and I can use the same floor all day. Now, moving down, nice simple shot and pattern. Spread bulk there of number nine shot, just one number 10 or number 11 at the top of it, just to trim the floor up, shot it exactly how I want. Further down from that, I've got my six inch hook length and that's 015 FXT rig line. A little bit more del delicate, Obviously, I'm expecting the fishing to be hard out there early on. I want to give myself a chance of catching everything, whether that be F1, skimmers, but hopefully carp, which that's plenty strong enough for. And then moving down to the bottom, I've actually bit my band off that now, but I've got a size 16 404 hide with a band on to hair rig my pellets. I bit that band off just to try a worm or two worms on the top, on the bottom over my pellets. Never caught anything doing that, but something that's always worth a try. Now next up, I've got my shallow rig. 
Now, set this up sort of mid-match, it wasn't really catching anything, but all of a sudden I had a couple of liners on the bottom, I seen a ball wave off and I thought, well, I'm going to have to have a go, maybe there's an odd fish starting to feed. It's just getting that midway point when you see an odd fish more getting caught. So I quickly set it up and again, exact same main line and same elastic, so that's 14 to 16 hybrid. 019 FXT rig line. I've got them back shots again because of the wind, just help me try and keep everything tight while I'm fishing and hopefully the fish will up themselves. It's got a nice small float there, reasonably thin body, little short tip in it with a bristle so I can just watch my float cock as I, sl as I slap it over. And then two number 11 shots spread out. Again, I just want to slap it in, watch them shots register and hopefully I'll catch a fish as it falls. Nice short, four inch hook length. 015 FXT rig line again to that 16 404 with a hair rigged bait band. And I think I've caught two fish on that. Again, a couple that have just ticked me along in the middle of the match. Finally, the rig that's been best for me, that last bit of the match when the fishing's become really, really good, or really good for a spell and then slowed off, but it's just allowed me to land the fish quick, make sure an out's getting damaged, and I can make the most of that good spell. So slightly heavier, 16 to 18 hybrid, Again, main line stepped up again a little bit. I've got O21 FXT rig line. Them same do two back shot to control my float. Same float that I've used out long in open water, 0.4 of a gram, nice thick bristle, carbon stem. And that, that O21 rig line is straight through to a size 12, 404, with a nice simple bulk of number nines. Probably eight inches, six to eight inches from the hook. Nice and positive keeps my rig fishing exactly where I want it. Most importantly, it's not gonna let me down. I can catch a lot of fish in a short time. Now, bait-wise, mostly pellets. I've had all different sizes. I've had some six mil pellets. I've used them to start off on, just tapping a few pellets in on the short pole where I just foul hooked one, didn't catch anything after that. Further out, four mil pellets. I've started off potting them in, then I've loose fed them with a catapult thinking I'll make a bit more noise, more pellets because they're a smaller size, so I can feed a few more, make a little bit more noise, and hopefully they appeal to everything. Now, amazingly, I've not caught anything over them other than two carp on the bottom and two shallow. Thought I might get an odd F1, an odd barbel, and them type of fish, but it never happened, unfortunately. Again, my six mil pellets for pinging on the bomb, and a few eight mils that I've used on the hook on the bomb. I can try them on the hook on the pole. The bait that has done most of the damage late on, maggots and micro pellets. I showed you in the match how I was feeding them, big handfuls of maggots, just a few micros, and upping the amount of micros as and when I felt like I needed to draw a few more fish back in the peg. Hook bait wise, two nice big worms have been brilliant down the edge. Obviously I'm feeding large volumes of bait, and then worms just stand out nicely, mean the carp can pick them out and I get a bite that little bit quicker than I might on a bunch of maggots. So that's bait and rigs, and now we're just going to wait about, get the scales, and I'll let you know exactly what I've caught in a little bit. That is the weighing done, and I've managed to wing coot with 117 pounds. So pretty bang on with my guess. I thought 110 to 120. Brilliant days fishing. Uh, looking back, that first half wasn't very good at all, but there was an odd fish moving to my right, sort of an odd swirl, an odd boil. Looking back after I set that shallow rig up and caught a couple, I maybe could have just slapped a rig about early on, might have caught an odd and shallow. Uh, to be honest, they weren't really feeding, so that maybe was the only way you were going to catch some. If I could have maybe caught 10 in the first half doing that, maybe could have caught another £20 or so. But overall, really good day. I think £80 being second on the lake, so them edgefish have really done it for me. Not sure what's been caught on Kingfisher. I think there's been some big weights on there. That's fished really well, but as the paying out first and second on each lake and no individual winner i think i'm going to claim that as the first live match win so that means yanni's going to miss out he can't get there and get it he'll make some rubbish excuse like i've fished more matches than what he has but we're not going to listen to any of it that's the first win for the live matches and i'll see you again on the bank very very soon